avenge my unfaithful husband. Pray that the Lord may bless my friend who has been married for three years with no children. Pastor Christian, you are welcome to pray for our friends. You are welcome. Let us pray to the God who is able to do abundantly, exceedingly above all that we ask or imagine. Amen? So let's bow our heads together as we pray. Oh, Father in heaven, by faith we enter into your throne room where we seat you sitting upon your throne, high and lifted up. And by faith, we know that we're welcomed into your presence. You want to hear the petitions. You want to hear the burdens of our hearts. And today, Lord, we are interceding for these very specific needs. Lord, we ask that you would be with these dear families. Be with our sister, Lord, that is going through a divorce. Lord, you know the pain of broken hearts. And we pray, Lord, that you would speak peace to her, that you would bring healing. We think of the husband who is involved in witchcraft and her wife, his wife, wants him back. And we pray, Lord, that you would please rebuke the enemy, cast out any unclean spirit, Lord, and we pray that you would heal his heart, that he would come to understand, that he would come to his senses and recognize, Lord, the danger of where he is. And I pray that you would bring him back and that you would heal hearts and bring them, Lord, into a saving relationship with you. Father in heaven, be with the young family, the young mother who, who wants to have children, Lord. Children are a gift from you, and we pray that you would grant her the desire of her heart, that for your glory, Lord, that she would be able to have children. We pray, Lord, that you would give her peace and trust in you, that she would know that you are God, that you care for her, and that she can trust you. I pray, Lord, that you would be today with those who are battling with marital conflicts. During this series, Lord, we have heard biblical principles. We have found answers. And we pray, Lord, that by your amazing grace that you would give ability and grant wisdom to men and women, husbands and wives, that they would be able, Lord, to see you perform miracles in their life as they give you permission to intervene and take control of their lives. Please, Lord, perform miracles even today as we hear about, hear about ingredients that could impact and save our marriage. If there's someone here today, Lord, that's on the verge of a broken marriage, may tonight, may there be a miracle. And may they leave this place with a renewed faith and trust in you that you are able to heal and restore their marriage. Speak through Pastor David today, Lord. Give us attentive hearts and listening ears. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor. Um, tomorrow, during the same time, I'll request Pastor Derek Morris for tomorrow to pray for this prayer request. Pastor Derek is one of my favorite authors. One of my books uh, written seven spiritual weapons in spiritual warfare. One of the people I quoted is Pastor Derek. Hallelujah. Yes, before uh, we begin the second part of the subject, I would like to introduce my lovely wife. <laughs> She's here with us and she can stand and just wave. Yes, that is the one. Hata makofi ampigi jamani. She's not a public speaker like me. 
<laughs> That's why. <laughs> tomorrow you will see her here. Let me give you just an appetite, and then tomorrow will be the best day. Um, when she is here, I'm more smart than ever before. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah, because she knows how to match everything. So I have somebody who will tell me that one will match with this one, and this one is not for you. So I'm perfect. Um, God's ingredients to get happy marriage, part two. Can we just see the few things we discussed about? You must have knowledge. Do you remember that one? You must have knowledge. Knowledge is very important. And wherever I've been standing here and speaking about marriage, you'll discover that I've been uh, insisting on knowledge because I say to have something, a machine, a camera, uh, whatever, mobile phone, a car, having it and knowing how to operate it, they are two different things. Hallelujah. So just loving this institution called marriage, it doesn't give you guarantee that you know how to drive it. So you have to seek knowledge. Hallelujah. Good marriage will include the following. Just giving you a reminder. Number one, faith. Faith. I say to have faith is to be sure of the things we hope for. Many people, when they see things are not happening as they expected, they give up easily. The Bible says you should not give up. You must have faith. Even if you don't see changes now, keep believing. God is working on it. Hallelujah. Don't give up. Don't run away from your marriage. Keep on holding. God is working. Hallelujah. Even if when we grow things like maize and sukuma wheat and those things, you don't go every day, every now and then. You go out and look if it's growing up. When you put it there, you just go and sleep waiting for it to grow up. When you tell God something, keep believing. God will work it out. Faith alone is not enough. Yes, it's not enough. For this very reason... Do your best to add goodness to your faith. I remember Ellen White said in one of her books uh, called uh, Prayer, she said, if God's people would only exercise faith, I, faith needs exercise. For this very reason, do your best to add goodness to your faith. And we said goodness. What is goodness? The personal quality of being moral good. Do your best. If you are underlining something, underline this. We do good to our spouses not because we feel doing it, but because it's good doing it. Hallelujah. We are not driving by emotions. Love is not a feeling. Love is knowledge. Hallelujah. So when you tell me, Pastor, I don't feel like doing it. You don't know. You made a vow for good and for worse. Hallelujah. Knowledge. What is knowledge? To your goodness, add knowledge. That's 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 5. To your goodness, add knowledge. So we begin with faith. Number one. Number two, goodness. You don't end up there. It says add knowledge. What is knowledge? Understanding of all information about subject that you get by experience or study either known by one person or by people generally. Let's not rush on this. 
if we talk about knowledge, is understanding of information about subject. And you get by experience or study. So you may not read books, but experience will teach you. Hallelujah. Keep on learning. Experience will tell you. And then you can study either known by one person or by people generally. I, I want to quote Mrs. McFingley. Today she, she asked me a tough question when we were just discussing some things there. She said, Pastor Mbaga, by the way, she, she, she don't know Mbaga, she know David. Mbaga is a band to name. <laughs> how did you know how women are and when you speak, you just hit on the point? <laughs> and then I told her, when I was taking my master's in, in counseling psychology, one of the things I was so much interested in is on communication among couples. And then I, I came to discover that one of the barriers of communication is difference in the way we view things. So I ended up studying more about these gender differences, especially in the way we view things. So I'm reading a lot of books and also experience. Hallelujah experience. When you know these things, even when you have your secretary, you are working with her, sometimes you may see her out of mood. You just detect women are more emotional than men. So don't tell her, why are you out of mood? She even don't know why. <laughs> just cop and go on. Get time to know what is good according to the perspective of your spouse. There is something you think is good for you, but is not good for her. You think is good for you. You, you. you have to take time. You have to start. You have to know. Does she love to go out several times or sometimes? What kind of food is... Does she more interested in, in that food? You have to know the kind of food she's more interested in. Take time. But number three is called self-control. Self-control. It's not only control, but self-control. You have to control yourself. In everything. Everything. What is self-control? Self-control is the ability to not show your feelings or not to do the things that your feelings make you want to do. Now you see, this, this definition is bringing us back to so-called emotional intelligence. You remember that? Yes, we are going back there. So self-control is the ability to control yourself is the ability not to show your feelings or not to do the thing that your feelings make you want to do. When it comes to food, Dr. Chid was teaching us here, when it comes to food, you have to, to have your own self-control. You feel like eating something, but you tell your body, I will not give you this kind of food. That is self-control. And everyone here you have self-control, but you have to exercise it so that it can become strong and strong. When you say, Pastor, but I don't, I don't, I don't have self-control, I don't have emotional intelligence, but I'm telling you this. When you wake up in the morning, your body tells you to keep on sleeping, right? But you tell yourself, I have to wake up. That's the sign you can control yourself. Self-control. Self-control. In a simple way, we say that a person who can trigger your anger 
is the person who can control you. So you have to be very careful. Self-control. You have to analyze your feelings. You have to know the result of the action after feeling. And then you have to tell yourself, I will not do this and I am able doing this. To your knowledge, add self-control. Practice. Number four, perseverance. I think if we'll have all these things, divorce rate will go down. Yeah, it will go down. Perseverance. The Bible says, Second Peter chapter 1, verse 6, New King James Version, to self-control, perseverance. To perseverance, godliness. I will not go there, but let's see perseverance. I remember when I was reading uh, the research about self-control and perseverance, uh, I came across this study which was, uh, it was done by Harvard University. They followed uh, about 10 children for 50 years. 10 children for 50 years. What they did, they just uh, took these 10 children, they gave them, uh, it was, I, I, I think it was chocolate. And then they told one of them, uh, all of them, that we are giving you this kind of chocolate and we are going out, keep on waiting for five hours. And when we come back, the one who will be waiting for five hours, we will give you more chocolate. Just imagine chocolate to children. So everyone is just looking at the chocolate there. About four of them could wait for five hours. But six of them, they could not wait. They followed up five of them for 50 years. They were more successful in life than six. And Six of them, you remember the other group of six children, five of them divorced within three years. You remember here, I told you that we have to train our children to have self control. Hallelujah. You remember the story I told you about the one who was in the plane and then they were sitting there, three of them. And then the children is cry, the child is crying that uh, mother, can you talk to the other person? I want to sit uh, near the window. I'm one of them too. Always when I'm booking the plane, I just want to sit near the window because I want to take some pictures. <laughs> and the guy was very busy near the window, just looking at the child who is crying, Mom, I want to go there, Mom, I want to go there. And the, the, the guy is quiet. And, and he's pretending as if nothing happened. Then the mother said, can you assist my child to sit there? The guy just looked at the mother and the child, and he was keeping on with his own things. To me, when I was watching the video, in my heart I was saying, this guy is very tough. You don't even feel, why, why don't you just allow the little kid to sit here? Then the mother asked again, can you assist my child just to sit there? The guy looked again and told the mother, I will not allow your child to sit here because I want your child to know is not everything you will ask in the world and you will get on time. We have to train our children. Hallelujah. We have to train ourselves. When Mrs. Mwasi was praying here, I was impressed by the way she was praying. She said, God help us so that we could not be only hearing the word, but let us keep in action. Just hearing these things will not help you. 
you have to act upon. Hallelujah. Train yourself. And I told you, one of the ways I am using myself to practice self-control is fasting. Fasting is the best remedy ever. Tell your body you need food, but I will not give you. Hallelujah. Tell your body, I will not give you. I have to fast for one day, three days. Train yourself. What is perseverance? This is continued effort to do or achieve something even when this is difficult or takes a long time. You're just sticking there. When I'm speaking to, to young people, always I do tell them, don't find quick achievement. It will cost you time. It will cost you failures. By the way, success is the total number of several failures. Oh, yes. Success is the total number of many failures. You will fail the first time. You will fail the second time. You will keep on failing. But because you have perseverance, you keep on going. You keep on trying until you make it. You have been married for two years and then you are telling us you want divorce. Two years is not enough. Two years you want divorce. Two years. You don't even know yourself. You want to know somebody. Two years. Even three years is not enough. It needs perseverance. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Keep on going. It is about staying committed to each other no matter what. Hallelujah. Commitment. Commitment. One of the popular uh, stars in America, I can't remember the name exactly, they were interviewing him. They, they were asking him, you have been going through tough times with your wife. And always when she's asking divorce, you don't give her. Why? The guy said, it, it took me a long time to produce the kind of woman I want. And behold, she as she is. How can I divorce her easily? It will take me more years to get another one and shape her. I am not ready for another training. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I am not ready. It needs time. You will only save your marriage if you are committed to each other. Commitment. No matter what, commitment. I would like to remind you one thing. Don't forget your vows. Don't forget that. Sometimes you may take them and read them, reread, reread, reread. Just keep on reading. They will tell you something. Read that one for me. One, two, three. Let's go. Yes. But this generation, our generation, not Dr. Lekundayo's generation, Pastor Ruguri, no, our generation, <laughs> our generation, we only want to enjoy marriage in good times only. When things are getting tough, we want to walk away. That's why I recommend for all mathematics teachers to remove calculators in our schools <laughs> because they are giving us a shortcut to solve mathematical problems. Maybe that's why when it comes to marriage, we, 
we find shortcuts. You want to calculate. May the Lord help us. When you face any difficult situation, God knows it. Hallelujah. God knew it before it happened. God knew everything. But so long as God allowed it, is his own way to train you to be tougher than the problem. Hallelujah. Accept this kind of training from God. Tree does not grow overnight. Hallelujah. A good marriage does not happen overnight. It needs time. Number five and the last one, I think, for tonight and then tomorrow we'll touch other things. Godliness. What is that? The book of 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7, Good News Bible, the Bible says, But keep away from those godless legions which are not worth telling. Keep yourself in training for a godly life. I, I know we, we have so-called WhatsApp group, Telegram groups for marriage, for women, for men, for everything. Some of these groups, they are not leading to save your marriage. They are training you in a way that you are going to destroy your marriage. That's why I recommend only one book when it comes to marriage. That is the Bible. Only one book. By the way, even myself, when, I, when I'm teaching you, I'm giving you seminars about psychology, about counseling, about whatever, stress management, how to keep your marriage. You have to test me from the word of God. When I'm saying anything contrary to the word, don't take it. The Bible is everything. It will train you. It will help you. Paul says, keep yourself in training for a godly life. In other words, godly life needs training. God life, God life is a life filled of love to God and his instructions. Love God first and then his instructions. Meditate upon him and his word. Hallelujah. Don't meditate about other things. Friends, I'm telling you this evening, the flesh will never support you to do God's will. Don't expect that. Never. But the Spirit will lead you there. Hallelujah. You know the challenge we have, and we have to admit that one, we, we have to listen from the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is teaching us to align the flesh and the word. Meditate upon him. Spirit-filled life. This will help you. And it is better for you sometimes to, to have your own time. You pray. You fast. Tell Jesus I want my life to be spirit-filled life. The Holy Spirit is the only one who will teach us. It's the only one who will guide us. No one knows me than the Holy Spirit. And he will speak to you, and you will save your marriage. Hallelujah. Tomorrow, that is the topic. What do real women want? <laughs> you know, I, I, I saw someone on these social medias. He's holding a very huge book. Big one. It's like this size. And then he's opening the page. And then they wrote here the book about women. And maybe I will touch some, if the time will allow us, 
what do real men want? <laughs> we will see that one. Friends, before we pray, just put in mind these things. If you want to save your marriage, two of you must be committed. Saving your marriage is not one person effort. It needs two of you to work together. Hallelujah. Don't forget to pray for wisdom. Don't forget to pray for wisdom. The kind of wisdom I'm talking about is not the way the world sees it. This is the wisdom from above. Is only God will give you the right wisdom. The word will tell you, when he kicks you, get out. But God will tell you, when he kicks you, pray for him. Because we are not fighting with our fellow human beings. This is a spiritual warfare. Devil is after your marriage. When you see the issue of homosexuality, devil is after family. Because he is not the author of the marriage or family. God is the author of our families. So the devil is fighting what God made. We have to protect it by prayer and wisdom from above. Let us stand for the word of prayer. Our Father, our Daddy Abba, we declare before people and angels there is no one like you. We believe that you can save even a person who is at the end of marriage. But tonight, Father, just speak a word. And that marriage will be saved. Just speak a word. Just speak a word tonight, Father. And when you do this, the person who is about to commit a suicide will change their mind. Just speak a word. We love you, Father, because you love us. And we commit every one of us in your hand because with you, we are more than safe. In Jesus' name we pray.